Okay, very good. Um, New Year. Everyone, great New Year. Get excited for New Year. Uh, Don't you get a little excited, anyone? Nobody? No. If you're excited with the last year, I don't know, that's, that's scary, you know, but it's exciting to start fresh. It seems things that keep, just keep getting worse. I remember 2020, going into 21, I said things couldn't get worse than 2020. The whole world shut down. But, 21, that, but I remember January 22, saying, oh, it can't get worse than 21. We thought it was going to get better, but it didn't. And then I remember last year, I said, oh, it can't get worse than 22. You know, we've got to be fresh going to 23. Then I think of 23. What took place last year? Personally, it might have been good. It might not. But I think if 2023, I'm not getting political. I'm just talking. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say anything about anyone. I just, inflation. It's running rampant. It's going out of control. I'm not blaming anyone. There's blame, but I'm not blaming anyone. But it's ridiculous. Inflation, how, how much money is coming out of our regular check. It's beyond belief, the inflation. Um, our border, whatever your view is. In December, I think, what is it, California or in America? I don't know. December alone was 320,000 illegal immigrants, however you want to call it. Do you know how many terrorists have snuck into our congregation? Into our congregation. <laughs> You're all terrorists. Uh, how many terrorists? How many uh, uh, cartel? And, and it just goes on and on. I know some of them truly are fleeing oppression in other countries, but this is an opportunity for the enemies of America, the enemies of mankind, to slip into our country. I, I think they said in the last three years about 8 million or so. Maybe they're saying by the completion of the year, 12 million illegal immigrants Anywhere in the world, I mean, we have terrorists in the world that are determined to destroy the little Satan and the big Satan. You can just slip into our country. It's scary. It's scary. Those of you who believe in open borders, just tell me about it and keep your doors open at night. Okay, I won't get, you know, I'm not going to. Crime, I, I, I marvel when I look at the crime that's going on now. Now, I think, yesterday, I think, they have advertisements on, on the stores for people to, to get together so we could do crime together. It's mind-boggling when you think of what took place last year. And I just told men becoming women, women becoming men, trans. It's, it's unbelievable to hear what's going on. Um, trans, I'm just refreshing your mind. Racism. That's a big, big word thrown out right now. Racism. And normally, traditionally, in the past, we've always thought whites, true, uh, suppressing blacks. And we've, America has gone a far, far way from uh, from that. We've we've done very good over the years. We fought a civil war over it. We've passed all kinds of legislation. And black people throughout the world come to America because they realize this is the greatest place in the world to come. But now, when we say racism, whether you like it or not, it's reversed, folks. It's reversed. If you're white, you're in trouble. I'm not going to get into too much. Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, we, we are in trouble. D-E-I. Now, I haven't been do- doing these updates, but I'm just not, but this is the new year, so I'm thinking. D- diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we're not picking people anymore for positions who are excellent. We're not picking people on their merit anymore. We're not picking people because they deserve it. We're picking them and today, based on whether you're white, black, or some other minority, which is racism. People have to stand on who they are, not their color. And that's what Martin Luther King used to say. Take me for who I am, not necessarily my color. Racism. October 7th, who would have ever believed the anti-Semitism that has come up in our world today? It's really incredibly, it's mind-boggling, the anti-Semitism that's coming throughout the world, throughout our country, throughout our colleges, the hatred. Uh, when you hear people saying pro-Palestinian, that means anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel. It's like never before. Jewish people, we've always said uh, that the Jewish people in Germany in the 30s, 20s and 30s, 1920s, 1930s, the Jewish people in Germany used to say, we're proud Germans. 
We're not Jews anymore. We're part of the people. That was in the 20s and 30s. And we look back and say, never again could that happen. Jewish people are assimilating and we want to be part of the world. And the world is rising up against us again in our own country. It's incredible. America, I have a tendency to think, we are no longer, I mean, we heard a great, a powerful, not a great, a powerful speech yesterday from the president who talks about democracy. We're losing it. Who talk about free speech. We're losing it. The things I say up here, I'm glad it doesn't go too far. But if it did, I could be arrested very easily for some of the things I'm saying. We are a country moving clearly toward Marxism, toward communism. We are a country where our government's becoming bigger, bigger, and bigger, and controlling and taking away your and my rights. It's scary to look at the news at night. We look at the news like four or five o'clock, and after a while, it's just, just horrible what's going on in our own midst, in our own country. Things are not getting better. Energy. Four years ago, we were the leaders in the world. Energy independent. Now we've gone so far down because now we're, we're looking to make everything electric, get rid of all our appliances. It goes on. I have a whole long list. How, how America can function with 34 or 5 million trillion dollars in debt. It goes beyond our minds how incredible our debt is. How much of our budget in America has to be just to be paying off our debt. We are in a scary time. Um, gender identity. I never heard of that. How, a child's born into the world. Is, is he male or female? I don't know. <laughs> Am I in a rational world anymore? You don't know if they're... Well, we'll see what they are. You won't see what they are. They are there. Gender identity? Then there's, I purposely choose my second word here, climate nonsense. <laughs> it's cold, it's hot. That's okay. You've got a cold winter, a warm winter, okay. Should we take care of our climate? Sure. Climate nonsense? That's our greatest danger? And and well, I'm, 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 yeah, I, I, I got the opportunity to do it, so I'm doing it. Homelessness, boy. Someone told me just uh, now they're going to New York for five days. Isn't that exciting? I went, <sighs> maybe. I used to love to go to New York, San Francisco. I wouldn't set foot there. I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death what could take place on those streets. It used to be exciting and fun to go to San Francisco, go to New York. <sighs> Homeless, it's scary. Binary, non-binary, a binary. Oh, half of us don't know what that means. Binary, male or female. You're either a male or female. Non, the whole world's becoming non-binary. We don't know what we are. Nobody has any clue. And scary world. What can we do? What can we do? Not much, folks. Not much, really. We can pray. But as believers, we have to take personal stock of who we are. What does God want from you and me? This message I begin a new year is to a refresher course. That's all it is. You've heard it a million times. It's a refresher course. What we can do as individuals. I can't do much corporately. I'm not in government. I'm not with it. I could do something personal with our congregation, you and me. What does God want from my life as I go into a new year? And, and I think about it. And I try to focus. What does God want from you and I right now as we go into a new year? I like the verse in Philippians chapter 3. Verse 13, brethren, I don't regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, attained the, the final goal, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, listen, had a good year, bad year last year, we've made mistakes, what do I, forget what lies behind, learn from it, and move forward. New, that's the great thing about a new year, that's what I love, it's fresh, it's new. So far, hopefully, we've had five good days. Don't worry, we'll mess it up, we've had five good days. It says, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on. I press forward. Press toward the goal for the prize of the upward goal of God in the Messiah Yeshua. What can we personally do? New commitment. New start. We need to reset and ask ourselves today, what does God want from me as I go into a new year? What are my priorities? What can I do? I truly believe, and I put these down, as what I think are very, very important. You might find others. For important priorities as we go into the new year. 
There, I put down here, I think I have three or four of them. Uh, yeah, three. The first priority that we, I, personal, as we start a new year, we need to put our priorities in their proper order, proper percent. First priority, everyone, we can write it down. We need to put, uh, to put God first in every area of our life. Simple, basic, you know it. You, you should say amen. God should be first in our, in, in, in our lives. How do we put God first? Before I get to even point two, how do we put God first? Well, I suggest uh, four ways to put God first. To put God first. First, we need to commit, and this, believe it or not, sounds so basic, and yet I argue with people about this all the time. First priority for God, putting God first. Um, we need to commit to reading God's Word daily. This is probably the most important thing in my life. To my dying day, I will tell believers, the greatest thing you can do is make a commitment. Putting God first is putting His Word first. God wants to speak to us every day. I know there's people who push, well, you know, I don't have to read every day. Yes, we should read every day to hear God's Word. Uh, one thing I loved about Fran's first Messianic rabbi back in the, uh, when was that, 70s, when she first, in Cincinnati. I mean, this man stressed all the time devotions. That's what I always say. Prayer and reading the Word. To, in order to properly put God first, you've got to say, I want to hear from you, God. How can you hear from God? Don't tell me. I'm going to sit there and wait. Oh. You hear from God by listening to His Word. It's that important. We need to hear from God. Uh, I, I like to quote, I saw a little caption uh, once. It said, uh, do you want to hear God speak? One person said, the, the other person said, yes, I do. He says, read the Bible. The other person says, no, no, I want to hear God audibly. He says, well, read the Bible out loud. Okay. <laughs> it's that important. I go so far as to say, you could be a good, fine person, but you can't be a spiritual person if you're not reading the Bible every day. You're not a spiritual person if you choose not to hear from God every day. I cannot fathom a married couple saying, I love my wife, and a couple times a week I talk to her. <laughs> you can't tell me you're spiritual if you don't read the Bible. You can't tell me, well, I'm not a reader. You've got to read the Bible in order to be spiritual. To be gro you're not growing spiritually if you're not reading God's Word every day. You might be a fine person. You might be doing good things. You might be a great humanitarian. You might be doing great, great things. You're not a spiritual person. If you're not reading the Bible every day. Now, listen. Not, okay, thank you, thank you. I knew I had one fan out there. Okay. You could disagree with me. That's okay. I'm up here. You, you have to suffer. Basic. You've got to be reading God's Word every day if you want to be spiritual. If you want to be growing spiritually, you've got to be reading His Word. A couple verses that I like to refer to. Uh, Rabbi Saul wrote to young Timothy. 2 Timothy uh, 2.15 Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth. You need to constantly be handling the word of truth. Dealing with it. Grappling with it. Talking about it. Felicity, it's great. I love doing ministry. You're doing ministry there. And I'm not asking you about your spiritual life. If you're not reading the word of God, you're doing something nice over there, but you're not spiritual. Okay, okay. I didn't say you weren't spiritual. Someone's going to say, he actually called her non-spiritual? I didn't say that. I said, if she's not reading the Word of God, get your act together. Oh, good, but she is. She wants you to know that. Well, not everyone. She is, right. All right. If you want to be spiritual and growing, you need to be reading God's Word every day. I didn't say you were a bad person. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, we always read these verses. You, however, the rabbi writing to young Timothy, continue in the things you've learned and been convinced of, from your childhood. Uh, the sacred writings which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through the Messiah Yeshua. All scriptures inspired by God. It is the only book in the world inspired by God. I mean, God moves people, inspires them in different ways, but inspired merely means breathe forth from God. God's word that we have in this world, the only thing you know for certain God spoke is the word of God. He spoke that to you. And that's inspired by God to change our lives, to teach us, reprove us, correct us, train us in righteousness. Second Peter 1. 
Peter says you have the prophetic word. That's a phrase meaning the whole Bible. Genesis to Revelation. You have, although he didn't have Revelation yet. But anyway, he meant the whole Bible. Uh, the prophetic word made sure to which you'll do pay attention to, to which you will do well as a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your heart. You have the word of God. It's so important. I will never stop saying that to people. That's how important it is. Don't tell me you're not a reader. If you're blind, you'll learn Braille. If you don't like reading, then put it on tape and listen to it. Read the Bible. You don't have to read other books. Books are great. You should read. But if you don't, read the Bible. If anything, if you want to hear from God. Um, Where is I? Uh, Psalm 19. The precepts way of saying God's word. Of the Lord, they're right. They rejoice your heart. The commandments of the Lord, they're pure. It opens your eyes. They're more desirable than gold. It's more important than gold. Gold's fleeting. The word of God is never fleeting. Much sweeter than gold. Sweeter than honey. From the dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, your servant is warned. In keeping God's word, there is great reward. Psalm 119, the whole psalm is so great, but the whole Psalm 119, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to God's word. Your word is a treasure in my heart that I might not, I've stored it, it's a treasure that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, Lord, teach me your statutes. I meditate, dwell on your word um, all the time. I shall delight in your statutes. Open my eyes, Lord, verse 18. Open my eyes that I might behold Wonderful truths from your word. I sort of get in a habit when I read, and I say, Lord, bless the word. But, and, and I should be more serious about it. But before I read, I always say, Lord, open my eyes. Give me clarity. Help me to understand. Open my eyes. 24, your testimonies, the word of God, are a delight. Uh, they're my counselors. They guide and direct us in life. I take vitamins. You take vitamins. Do you feel it every day? No, it's cumulative. But taking the word of God every day, it changes your life. It puts God into your mind and your thoughts. Uh, this is my comfort and my affliction, that your word has given me hope, it revived me. The law of your uh, mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Oh, how I love your law. It's my meditation. Hopefully it's your meditation all the day. It's the wisdom from God. I understand more than the old people, the aged, who have all the wisdom. Because I've observed your precepts. How sweet are your words to my taste. They're sweeter than the honeycomb. Therefore I love your commandments. Above gold, above fine gold. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding. I rise before dawn. That's a great testimony. To rise before dawn. And read the word. It's that important. Wake up. Open your eyes. And start reading the word of God. Let me encourage you. Open your eyes, and before you do this, oh, interesting, did you get what's going on today? Before you do that, read the Word of God. The internet, devastating, to destroy you. It'll take you away from God's Word. Before you do that, um, those who love your law have great peace. If you want your priority first today with God, first thing you've got to say when you leave here today, I must read the Word of God. Matter, as soon as you say must, I don't like that. Yeah, you must. And if you don't like it, you become, you say it's legalistic, it's rote. You do what's right and ask God to change your feelings. But it's that important. It's the only book in the world that has the wisdom of God. You should be reading the word. Second, getting your priority right with God. Second, you need to pray every day. The two things that will change your life is saying, I will read every day, I will pray every day. I didn't say how long to read, I didn't say how long to pray. You start with that and let God take over. You need to pray every day. Um, probably, and I have here, we need to seek God by praying. Um, I think Austin's going to be talking about prayer um, in a couple weeks. Um, and uh, prayer is so important. We don't hear too much about it, but uh, in the book of Mark, chapter 1, you don't have to turn to it. Let me trust me, you can read it later. It's the busiest recorded day in the Bible of Yeshua's work. But he might have done other days busier, I don't know. But in recorded the Bible, Mark 1 records the busiest day that Yeshua has ever had in the Bible. 
And Mark 1, it begins with him walking into the synagogue with his disciples. And he speaks in there, and he heals in there. They come out of the synagogue. He goes to his mother-in-law's house for lunch. He starts healing, healing his mother-in-law, healing people, doing all kinds of work all afternoon. At night, the whole town comes to the house, and, they, and he heals and does all kinds of speaking and miracles all night long, Mark chapter 1. Then it tells us in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, I love this portion, because it tells us, because if you're ever in Capernaum with me, you see, uh, we sit by the sea, and I try to envision what it's like about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Pitch black. Mark chapter 1, after the busiest recorded day, verse 35, in the early morning, fine, 8, 9 o'clock, maybe, while it was still dark, ah, three or four o'clock maybe in the morning, while it was still dark, Yeshua got up after the busiest day, got up, left the house, went away to a secluded place. Everyone, what was he doing there? It's that important. If the Son of God, King of Kings, needed prayer, how much more us? You want your priority right with God today? You leave your, forget everything. If you say, I will read every day, I will pray every day. Yeshua, Luke 18.1, he was telling the the disciples a parable, telling them to show them at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Constantly pray. It's hard. Some people are geared. They can talk to God easier than read. Others can read easier than can pray. Do both. We need both. You need to hear from God. You need to speak to God. You don't have to be formal. You don't have to say, Lord, help me today. I love in the morning, because when I pray every morning, I say, Lord, here's my day. I got it planned. I'm one of those disciplined. I got to have a prayer, a plan. The whole day. I go through every phase of the day with the Lord. Then I say, Lord, bless it. Remove it. Add to it. But I'm committing the day. You need to pray. It's that important. Luke really should be the book of prayer. Look what it says. Before you do ministry, certainly Saturday morning before I'm here with you, I'm crying out to the Lord in the morning. But the news about him, Yeshua spreading, it spread even further. Crowds gathered together to be healed of their sicknesses. But Yeshua himself often would slip away into the wilderness and do what, everyone? Before important decisions. I know we we do that. It says Luke 6. It was at this time that he went off the mountain to pray. He spent the whole night in prayer to God. I've never done that. I've never done that. When he was came together, he called his disciples. He prayed before he was picking his 12. Before a major crisis in your life, it says Luke 22. He came out and proceeded as was his cup to the Mount of Olives. Disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, pray that you might enter, not enter temptation. He knew what was happening. He knew what he came to earth for. He knew that he came to die. I always picture that scene. Yeshua in the garden, Peter and the disciples around him. Here comes Judas and the Jewish leaders and the Roman cohort. And they're all coming up. And I picture Peter saying to Yeshua, they're coming, they're coming. Let's get out of here quick. And Yeshua stood there because he knew why he came. And he said, an incredible statement, he says, don't you realize that I have about 72,000 angels at my command to destroy everything. Yeshua is dying on the cross, and the leaders say, come down, come down now. He knew, he said, they said, they will believe, they wouldn't. He knew what was ahead. And he knew the crisis, and he's there in the garden, pray that you won't enter temptation. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, uh, he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup. Remove this cup. But if not, not my will, yours be done. Major crisis. He was praying fervently. Before everything, the Bible says pray. I mean, Larry, you tell me all the time, pray. Yeah, all the time, pray. Yeah, means, and they use the illustration like a hacking cough. (coughs) Can't get rid of it. (coughs) Keep coughing, keep coughing. Keep praying, keep praying. All the time. You see Felicity get up here? Oh, Lord, help her. Be quick to pray for people. It says, um, be anxious for nothing. I've heard people say to me, it says, be anxious for nothing. He says, but what I'm anxious for is something, so therefore I, I should be anxious. 
Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Pray always. How do you set your priorities right with God? First, you make sure I'm reading. I, I should say for an hour, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. I'll allow her I know. Keep reading, keep reading. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. First Thessalonians, pray without seeking. Third, how do you pray, get your priorities with God right? You pray, you read. Third, you use your gifts and your talents to serve God. I was so blessed today coming here. All you guys from Pendleton, is this your first time? Um, no, you've been here. Uh, how many? One, first? Second? Okay. What time did you guys get here today? Seven-ish. Why? Why? To help set up? That's what God's called us to do, folks. To serve. We have gifts, talents, and abilities. Don't hide them. Use them for God. Lord, that should be, that should be your agonizing. Lord, what do you want me to do in my life? You want me to move to Australia? Okay. <laughs> what do you want? God wants you to serve Him. You were born with certain abilities. God is, you were born again with certain talents and gifts. God wants you to serve and use them. We are called to serve. May 2024 be the year I serve. First Peter says this, as each one has received a special gift, you've all received a special gift. Uh, employ it, use it, serving one another as good stewards of God's grace. Whoever speaks, preaches, teaches, whoever does that, um, do so as one speaking the word of God. Whoever serves, you have service ministries. I got what is that? Wings, workers in God's service. That's cool ministry. Back of it, you started. That's great. I mean, she wants to serve that way. Make use of it. It's the first time we've ever had a website. You put your things there, and she's going to take off with it. They're going to cook for you. They're going to drive for you. For our congregation. Now, I know some of you are going to say, I have a, a brother whose aunt and my mother and my father's side, a couple of generations down the road, uh, she got a cough last week and her cat ran out. And so, therefore, can you prepare a meal for her? You're going to try it. It's for Shuva. That's why we, we can't save the whole world, but we can deal with our people. Service. Use it. He who uh, speaks, teach. He who serves, serve. Romans 12. For we are one body, many members in the same body. Um, one body, we serve individually, we serve one another. Romans 12, uh, 6. Since we have gifts that are, differ according to the grace given to us, God gives each one a different gift. If you prophesy, speak forth according to your uh, proportion uh, of your faith. If you serve in your serving, in your teaching, in your teaching, he who exhorts, exhort people. Find out what you do well. Don't go looking for your gifts. I got to find it and use the gifts. And Find out what you do, do well, learn it, do better, and serve God with your gifts and talents. Um, he who uh, gives, give liberally. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, the same spirit. A variety of ministries, many different ministries, the same Lord. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But each one is given uh, the manifestation of the Spirit for the good of the people. You have a gift, talent, serve God with it. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, giving to each one individually as He wills. We need to read. We need to pray. We need to serve to get your priorities straight with God today. I'm picking just the biggies. There's a lot of others. And fourth, you want to get your priorities? You need to be a tshuva every Saturday. You know what I'm looking at. No. Some of you need to watch us online. Praise God. Please. What a great technology we have. You can. But we need you here. I need to see you. You need to see us. We need to fellowship with each other. You need to touch base with people. Look for people. Just touch them. Hand and shoulder. How you doing? Who are you? I, I don't know. I don't, like, I don't like to be involved with it. Who are you? Where do you come from? How long have you been coming here? We need to encourage one another. Attend services every week. We know the verse. Um, Hebrews 10.24 Let's consider how to stimulate each other. Provoke each other in a good way. To love and good deeds. 
not forsaking the assembling together, as is the habit of some people. But um, encourage one another more and more as you see the day drawing near. Larry, you don't understand. I work during the week. This is the one chance I get to sleep in. Sleep in Sunday. Come here. I mean, we don't start till 10 o'clock. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, you, you want to sleep in? At the, how late? How long does it take to get here? You could get up at 9 o'clock. Ah, but you want me to read and pray? All right, get up at 8 o'clock. Okay, now you're getting too early. Anyway, um, you should be here attending service. We were just singing before. I was so blessed to be up here. That last song, we're all singing together. And I thought in uh, about six weeks, we're going to be at uh, the South Coast Conference over at, at the Marriott. It was such a blessing to hear a couple hundred people singing praises. But on Saturday morning at the conference, I get up there and I see 500 to 800 people praising the Lord. It's such a blessing to see the people attending services together. Um, we need to worship the Lord together. Um, I don't need to go into the other verses. Get your priorities right. First, you make sure I'm going to read the Word of God every day. I didn't say how much. You're going to pray every day. You're going to serve God with the talents, the gifts that God's given you. You're going to attend service for priority with God for a second priority as we go into the new year. Everything first. First, put God. Second, we need to give God first and consistently. What am I talking about? I just recently saw, I don't know if I could say this publicly, Jerry Maguire? I don't know. I say, you know, I say some movies up here, and I'm getting later. I'm really offended that you even saw such a movie. But anyway, but I liked about Jerry Maguire. He was a, an agent for the sports guys. And what did his friend say to him, everyone? Show me the money. Everyone together, so I don't feel embarrassed. Show me the money. Now, I'm not looking for money. But money many times shows you where you're at. Yeshua spoke so much about money. It shows you where you're at. It shows you where your priorities. One, per, one preacher used to say, I know your priorities. Show me your bank book. Show me your checkbook. Money shows us where we're at. Shows who we, who we really trust. What we first, we have to decide we have to give to God first. Follow along with me. Give God first. Before you use it up, folks. Before you use it up. You get your check. You make sure I get my uh, check. In, in, it goes directly in the day and age. It goes directly to the bank. But I make sure first I write my check before anything to Shuva Yisrael. Anywhere else you're giving, write the check first. Otherwise, it's gone. Give God first. Proverbs 3. Honor the Lord from your wealth, from the first of your produce, so your barns will be filled with plenty. You know what that's real? Let me paraphrase it. Honor God, give God, and He will take care of your needs. That's what it's really saying. Not only does God just take care of your needs, He does it abundantly. God takes care of you. Shows you, am I going to trust God? Oh, it's hard. Put God first. Malachi, we always quote, Will a, God, will a man rob God? You're robbing me because you're not giving to me. You're, you're, you are cursed with a curse for you're robbing me. Bring your whole offering. Back then a tithe. I don't believe in a tithe. Just to let you know. Some people believe you're required to give God a tenth. I don't. I think the Old Testament, they were required to give God a tenth, a tenth and a tenth. Mounted about 22. But that we're not going to get to that. Honor God from your wealth. I think the New Testament tells us give to God. How much? 10% is a good measuring rod from the Old Testament. My teacher used to say, don't get stuck on 10. Give 9 or 11. He says, but the Bible teaches us, give to God. And He will bless you for trusting Him. Give, I said first, give first uh, to God. Second, give generously. Don't be cheap. Listen, you want to be cheap out there in the world? Fine. Not a good quality, but don't be cheap with God. Because he knows. These people in the Old Testament, they would give God, they, oh, we'll get, here's my beautiful, beautiful sheep. No, Give God a bad one. One who has all kinds of flaws. Don't be cheap with God. Give generously to God. Proverbs. There's one who scatters. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Oh, get rid of it. Yet, they increase all the more. There's one who holds. 
What does justly do? It results he wants more. The generous man will be prosperous. He who waters will himself be watered. Give and it's going to come back to you. Do you trust God to do that? He who withholds grain, people will curse him, being a cheapo. Blessings will be on the head of him who sells it. Proverbs 19. One who is gracious to a poor man, I love that next word, lends to God. Isn't that, wouldn't you love to lend God? Let him be in debt to you. That's pretty cool. You lend to the Lord, and he will repay you for your good deeds. If you really trust him, you'll do that. Give generously. Give, Luke, and it will be given to you. Uh, they will pour into your lap good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, more and more. Give, 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 give generously. Give first, give generously. Galatians 6. The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not, I like that, share good things with me. Uh, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh will reap from the flesh corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will reap, and the Spirit will reap eternal life. 2 Corinthians 9, this I say, he who sows sparingly, God knows when you're cheap. You sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Give first to God, give generously, give cheerfully. Look forward to it. Isn't that cool? You get money, I can't wait to give to God. That's what he's saying. Give back to each one, 2 Corinthians 9, each one must do just as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a person who's laughing and cheering and happy when he gives. And finally, give sacrificially. Give sacrificially. Probably, of all giving, I, I like this the most, you've heard it many times, but give first, Give generously, give cheerfully, give sacrificially. Well, how I mean, how much do you give? I told you 9 and 11. If you give nothing, ah, start with five, it's okay. Then you work your way up. After a while, you love giving because it's such a joy to give. Mark 12, as he sat opposite the treasury, he began observing the people putting their money in. Many rich people putting lots of money in, lots of money. But a poor widow came and put in two small coins which amounted to a cent, calling his disciples. He said to them, truly I say to you, she put in more than all of them. What was he teaching them? They put in way more than her because the man had so much. He had so much. What he gives, he didn't need. It's extra. What she had, she had enough to give her bread for the day, to survive for the day. She gave it away, trusting God. She gave sacrificially. That's what God asks from us. Give a little extra. Give a little bit more. Don't be cheap with God. He sees, he sees it. Um, finally, last thing. Get our priorities straight with God. What do you do? You read, you pray, you serve, you attend. Get your priorities right with God. Give God the money. Give Him. It's just showing you trust Him. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But you're showing him. You Lend to the Lord. It'll go good for you. Last priority. Last priority today. First, God, you're giving. And last, we need to reach out to all people. To the Jew first and to the Gentile. God tells us that. Reach out. This is where we don't like it. God is telling you to share your faith. I'm scared to share my faith. Anyone scared? Don't raise your hand. Everyone's scared to share your faith. God wants you to share your faith. What do I share, everyone? What could I say? I don't know where to start. Larry, you're trained. You get up there and you can share. Everyone, what do I teach you to share? Everyone first. Your story. You all have a story. Unless you weren't born. If you were born, you got a story to tell. Second, you tell them, story, go into your testimony. I love to tell the story. People say to me, how did you get involved with this? I say, because someone came up to me 
And I told him, I purposely say it this way, someone I thought was a Michigana, someone I thought was crazy, someone who believed against what I will believe. They came to me, they challenged me. Tell them your story. You have a story, you have a little testimony to give. How you came to faith, how you came to believe in Yeshua, how you came to Shuvah. And finally, if you know it, throw a verse in here and there. The Bible, God's Word, it's sharper than any sword. It pierces. Use the Bible. When some people hear you say a Bible verse, a simple Bible verse that you've known and said your whole life, they know nothing. As soon as you say a Bible verse, they go, oh, you, you know stuff. A lot of times I share with people, and they go, oh, you're a holy man. If you say the Bible. I told you, I share with Jewish people. I start quoting the Bible. I start quoting Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. I start quoting the stories in the Bible. People got to look at me and go, oh, you could have been a rabbi. I say, thank you. I'm not sure what I am now, but thank you. You all have a, a story. You have a testimony. Use the Bible. To all people, we know, Acts 1. So when they come together, the disciples, the day of Pentecost, they came together, not the day of Pentecost, this is before, uh, 10 days before, they were asking him, Lord, is it this time you're going to set up the kingdom? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times, the seasons, uh, which are fixed by God, but you will receive power someday. Wait in Jerusalem. I'm going to send the Spirit. He's going to give you power. And with the power of God on you, you know what you'll do with that power? You will share the Word of God with all people, to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. He says, you shall be my witnesses everywhere, Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the whole world. You will be my witnesses to all people. 2 Corinthians 5. Now all these things are from God who reconciled, made you friends with God, reconciled you to himself because and through Yeshua who gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Everyone I don't know what your ministry is, what you're doing. You all, all have the same ministry here, one ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. You are called to reconcile the world to God. I should say the left bubble to God. You're here to call them to, God has been reconciled with you, now you be reconciled to God. God reconciled himself with you by sending his son to die for you. Now you put your trust in him and receive the Messiah. Namely, that there's your ministry. Namely, that God was in the Messiah reconciling the world to himself. That's how God reconciled the world to him. He sent Messiah to die. Not counting their trespasses against them, he's committed to them the word of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5.20 Therefore, you and I, we are all ambassadors sent by God for the Messiah as though God were begging and pleading and appealing to the world. We beg you on behalf of the Messiah. Be reconciled to God. That's what our ministry is. Begging the world, be reconciled to God. He's been reconciled with you. To all people. But the Bible makes a special emphasis to the Jewish people first and also to the rest of the world. Make sure our people are getting the gospel. That's why God raised up Shuva to be a witness to our Jewish people and also to the Gentiles. To the Jewish people first. First Corinthians, uh, Romans 1, Rabbi Saul says, I'm under obligation to the Greeks, to the barbarians, to the wise, to the foolish, um, so that for my part I'm eager to preach the good news uh, to you in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And many people end it there. But he wrote, make sure the Jewish people get it. Priority, make sure they get it first. And also the rest of the world. Everyone knows Rabbi Saul, the Apostle Paul, was the Apostle to the who? Gentiles. Study yourself. Go look through, read through the book of Acts. Rabbi Saul, on his first journey throughout the ancient world, Asia Minor, everywhere he went, he's the Apostle to the Gentiles. Everywhere he went, he went to the Jewish people first. Always, where's the synagogue? Sharing his faith. Uh, first, second journey, everywhere he went, Jewish people first. Third, Jewish people first. It's a priority. We need to, all of us, make sure that as we go, as we give, share our faith with all people, what are we doing to reach the Jewish people with the good news? God has called us today 
to share our good faith with everybody to the Jew first. As we start a new year, everyone, we need to put our priorities in their proper order. Everyone, first, get your act together with God. Put God first. How do you do that? Today, say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to read. I'm going to, what's third? Uh, I'm going to share my, uh, my gifts, my talents. I'm going to give my abilities, serve. And fourth, I'm going to attend the congregation regularly. Now, if you're a visitor, great, love you. Go to your place on Sunday. But if not, you belong here. If you, don't, if you wake up with a little headache, let me tell you, two exceptions will go a long way. A cup of coffee, you'll be fine. You come, you'll be speeding. You'll be great. You don't feel a little well, you have some germs, stay home, no one wants it. But you need to attend. Get your priority right with God first. Second, make sure you're giving. God can give you the money or take it away. Show you're going to trust Him by giving cheerfully, by giving generously, by giving Him first, by giving sacrificially. Third, I will share my faith, Lord. I'm going to be scared. Can you bring people my way so that I might share my faith with all people, Jewish people first, and also the Gentiles? God, we thank you this morning as we start a new year. We start a new year with you, Lord. There's not much we could do out there. It's scary. But you're calling me personally to have a relationship with you. Help me to put my priorities straight today, Lord. My relationship with you, my giving, my sharing. I commit all this to you today, Lord. We start off great on the first Saturday of uh, January. Let's continue throughout the whole year. We ask, Lord, if there's someone here today that doesn't have a relationship with you, they're visitors, but they've never accepted the Messiah, that they might say today very quietly to themselves, right now, God, I've sinned against you. I second believe you sent Yeshua, Jesus, to die for me. I now want to receive him into my life to be my Messiah and Savior. We ask, Lord, that you'd speak to all of our hearts. Bless this time, we pray in Yeshua's name. Amen.